Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be on rulers with Doug Hills. Before we begin the webinar, there are a few housekeeping items that I'd like to review with everyone. First of all, the webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. The Q&A session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions right away in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. Today's panelists are myself, Fahim Niaz, and Doug Hills. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, or for those of you who have never heard of Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. For more information and to learn more about Clip Studio Paint, please visit us at clipstudio.net forward slash en or at graphicsly.com. And with that, we'll be passing the reins of the webinar over to Doug, where he'll begin his presentation. Okay, hopefully everyone. Uh, good morning slash afternoon, everybody. My name is Doug Hills. I'm a commercial artist, uh, storyboard artist, concept artist, comic book artist, uh, author of Manga Studio for Dummies, um, producer of several tutorial videos, uh, hopefully you guys have checked some of them out over the years. Uh, and first off, thank you guys for coming to this webinar. I'm really looking forward to talking about probably still my favorite thing about Clip Studio Paint. And I've those of you who have known me for years have heard me rave about rulers. Um, I've known about rulers since before this program was available in the United States. So like 2005, I believe, 2006, I heard about this program in Japan. And I've tried all sorts of different programs over the years. And when I heard about this, this Japanese program, I was like, oh, that's cool. They have rulers. And this was during a time when uh, Cintiqs did not exist yet. Uh, so the idea of drawing straight lines using only a, uh, a drawing tablet like an Intuos or a Bamboo or something like that was near impossible. So usually you would have to use like the straight line tool in Photoshop or a similar uh, type of drawing uh, tool. So now with that said, there are a lot of rulers in Clip Studio Paint. So there are, it, so for those that maybe are brand new to digital drawing and want to have like something more like the real world, like rulers and curves and triangles and uh, drafting tools that you may be familiar with, you can use similar ones in Clip Studio Paint. But because we're also working on a computer, we can take advantage of things that you, you can't do, uh, such as being able to draw perspective uh, in perspective without any uh, rulers outside of setting up your vanishing points. So now with that said, there are a lot of rulers and stuff to cover. So I'm going to be giving a general overview to start, including how I like to use rulers in my work. I'm not going to get too specific onto things. So if there is something I talk about or that I don't cover and uh, you'd like to try and get me to answer, please send your questions to Fahim. And during the Q&A session, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. So let's just start right from the top. Now I'm gonna switch to my blank screen here. Now the rulers, if you've not used Clip Studio Paint, if you're a brand new user, the rulers are located right around here on your default workspace. Um, oh, by the way, for those of you that are curious, um, I'm not using a Cintiq. So if you are a, a new user that does not uh, own a Cintiq or a monitor that you can draw on, I'm using my my trusty Intuos, uh, like a 2011 Intuos Pro uh, on my MacBook Pro uh, 2015 model. So I'm working on, you know, not the latest or greatest. So never feel like, oh, I'm, I don't have like, the biggest machine or I don't have the the 
the fanciest uh, monitor. You can do everything I'm doing with a with a Wacom Intuos or a Wacom Bamboo or any of their their products. Um, you can use it on a Windows machine. You can use it on a Mac machine. Uh, but in case you're curious what I'm working on, that's what I'm using. Um, okay, so on the tools palette, there is an icon that kind of looks like a like a triangle, and these are your ruler tools. Um, you can also find it by pressing U on your keyboard. Now that keyboard shortcut sh uh, shares space with the frame tool and the direct draw tools, so you may have to hit it a couple of times before you see your rulers tools. And I'm going to start right from the top. Uh, right here, we have our linear rulers. Now, this is, as the name implies, this is where you can create like a simple line. To do that, after you select it, is you just click to start your, your starting point, drag along the canvas, and then release. And there's our line. If I want to adjust it, I come over to the object select tool, located over here. Or you can press O on your keyboard, and then you click on the ruler. And you'll see like these bounding boxes, or this bounding box. And this allows me to resize. And if I use this little control nib up top, rotate. There are also two control points here and here. These are the ones that we laid down when we placed the ruler on the canvas. If I click on either of these points, I can adjust the ruler that way. So if I wanted to draw, let's say, like a pinwheel or kind of do like a simple, uh, you know, like set up like vanishing vanishing lines. Like say, like if I was doing a perspective uh, drawing, and I have my horizon here, this is where the line starts. I just grab my pen and draw right along the line. And this right here, is why I like the rulers versus just using the straight line tool. If I use the straight line tool, I can draw a straight line, but it's very simple. It's very basic. Undo that, go back to my pen tool. With the ruler tool, I can make the line as thick or as thin as I want. If I go to the object select tool, other cool little trick, if you didn't want to switch, keep switching between the, uh, the object select tool and your pen, hold down on the Mac, it's command key, or on uh, Windows, it's the control key, and it temporarily switches to the object select tool. So you can res. And just kind of keep on drawing and repositioning however I'd like. Um, let me clear that out. And if I'm done with a ruler, just select it and press the clear button up here, or the delete key on your keyboard. All right, coming back to our set of rulers, under right below the subtools are your tool properties. Now these are just a couple of options that you can use to tweak the settings of your ruler before you place them down. Uh, with the linear ruler, like I showed you, I can create a straight line, but I can also create a very simple curve in one of two ways, a quadratic bezier and a cubic bezier. And I'll lay both down just to show as examples. For the quadratic bezier, Click, Oops. I click, drag, just like I did my, with my linear. And when I release, I can adjust the bend. And I'll do that and just tap on the canvas, sets the ruler. For a cubic bezier, kind of a similar thing. Click, drag, set one point here and one point here. Now, when I go to the object select tool, and I click on it, you'll see I have my two control points, and then I have like this third control point that are kind of like attached like with strings. And to adjust the curve, I just click and drag this third point. With the linear, or yeah, with the other bezier, I have like two additional points. So that adjusts the intensity of the curve. So that gives us a more of an option to like when we're creating something, like say you're drawing a car and you want to try to get that curve along the hood just right, you can use this as a way to adjust the curve of the ruler and then grab your pen and just draw right along it. 
clear that out. And boom, I'm going to clear these out. All right. So that's your simple uh, line and curves. The curve ruler kind of works. I feel like it's if you've ever used like some of the drafting tools, it's kind of like a bendy ruler. Uh, this kind of works the same way uh, in four different ways. Uh, I can create basically like a jagged line. So right now I have a straight line. It's like click, 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 click. I'll hit enter to close that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and then enter. Now I'm going to go to the select tool and show the ways you can adjust these rulers. You click on it, kind of like the li the linear tool. I just have a set of control points. So I click and drag to the shape that I need. So uh, going back to here. So those are the different shapes that you can create. But let's talk a little quickly about that. So I'm going to grab the linear ruler. And I'm going to use the pen. And I just, yeah, like you said, draw right along it. Now, if I draw away from the screen or away from the ruler, it, you know, I can draw as freely as I'd like. If I draw along the ruler, it snaps to it. Now, if I were to work on something and say I don't want to snap to the ruler temp, you know, for a second, up here on the command bar are a couple of snap to options. So right now, this is snap to ruler. So this is snapping to all of your basic rulers. Now, right now it's active, so it's a little darker on the command bar. If I turn that off, now I can draw freely along the the uh, the the ruler without it snapping. When I'm ready to snap to it again, just press that snap to button, and I'll draw just fine. All right, move along quickly here. So those are you know talked about the curve rulers quickly. Figure rulers allow us to create basic shapes. So a rectangle, an ellipse, or a circle, and a polygon. Now, right now, this is set to uh, um, hexagon. If I wanted to make something uh, with more or fewer vertices, I click the little plus button here, and I can set the number of vertices. As high as 32 and as low as 3. So if I wanted to make a simple triangle, And you'll notice, by the way, I can even adjust the angle. So after I set the shape, I just kind of hover over and adjust the angle of the, the shape and then tap on the canvas. And then I just grab my pen. And just snap right along them. Like so. And actually, I'm going to uh, put my ruler. My layers here and hide my I'm gonna delete my rulers. I'm just holding down the shift key by the way with my object select tool that allows me to select multiple uh, shapes. And before I do that, actually, I want to do one more thing quick. You can adjust the shape of the ruler as you need. So, if say you wanted a trapezoid instead of a square, you can adjust the shape of the of the figure and draw along those. But if I go and delete those. Two, three, four, and clear. You can see my basic shapes, and you can see that I that being able to adjust the 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 line shape and the line uh, intensity is just something that's nice. It gives that more of a real world feel. I'm one of those guys that like I've been doing digital drawing for a very long time, and I work really hard to make sure that my stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, does not look digital. And having something like just having rulers to draw along helps me do just that. So I'm very among the many things about Clip Studio Paint. This that alone is uh, something I am very grateful for. So let me clear this out. Come back to our rulers. And the other one, this is a cool little thing. Um, say that there's a specific shape that you want. You just want to make your own shape. 
the ruler pen allows me to draw anything I want. That could be a full shape or I can just leave it like that. So this allows you to be as abstract as you want. And let's say that, okay, this is cool, but it's not exactly how I want it to look. Like I want to make some adjustments back to the object select tool. It will be your best friend when working with rulers. I click on it, you'll see all of these control points. And I just adjust the control points to make these all match where I'd like the shape to, uh, how I'd like the shape to look. If I want to get rid of a, a control point, I click on it and right click and just hit delete control point and that removes it. And again, you know, draw along it, snap it. If you want it to not snap, just turn off the snap to until you're done and ready to snap to again. Clear that out. Like I said, there are a lot of things and it's crazy. We're already 20 minutes into this. All right, back here. So those were all of our basic rulers. And these are the things, like I said, these are the Clip Studio Paint equivalent to our real world tools with a, with a few like cool bonuses. But generally this is supposed to be like your, your oval tool uh, uh, templates or a compass or a ruler or a triangle or any of the drafting tools you may be normally familiar with. You can use those same tools in Clip Studio Paint using these basic uh, rulers. Now let's dive into the things that make Clip Studio Paint really cool versus just using a basic uh, ruler. Under the ruler pen, we have special rulers. And coming to tool properties, we have a variety of special rulers that we can use. Uh, parallel line, parallel curve, multiple curve, radial line, radial curve, concentric circle, and guides. And with all of these, let's say for parallel line, I click that, and I'm just going to draw, I'm going to set my angle to this, like this. Now release, and now you're going to see these three lines. If I wanted to adjust the angle, I click the object select tool. And I will see these two circles and a plus sign. The plus plus sign helps me reposition the circle three linear rulers. This is where it makes it different than just using the basic rulers. I'm going to switch to my pencil tool. And I'm not going to draw anywhere near the lines here. So every line that I draw, I can even try drawing this way, and it's still forcing the lines to go in this specific angle. If I clear this out, change the angle. And I can draw as like, I can be as wavy as I want, and the line is going to snap to the angle that I've set with the parallel line tool. Clear that out. Parallel curve works kind of the same way. Uh, I can either, basically I'm just gonna set a couple of points just like I did with the curve tool. So you'll see like these three parallel lines. Same method. I'm just drawing and it snaps to the curve that I set. Object select tool, change. my points like that okay multiple curve sets up the same way incidentally by the way if you come over here you'll see there are a couple of options very similar to when we set up the curve tool so any of the things that I covered with the curve tool for setting up the ruler works the same way with the multiple curve and the parallel curve tools so I'm going to stick with the spline so it's just the control points I'm going to do the same thing I did with the uh, parallel curves. So it looks like the same three lines. Go into the object select tool. We're going to get our control points, but we're also going to get this little uh, additional control point that sets kind of like a pinch. So it um, allows us to create kind of an, uh, a, a ribbon effect. 
So now, as I go like that, and I draw, it's going to create like a cool ribbon effect when, when drawing. Okay. That's the curve. Radial line, this is where you, if you're a, a manga fan, you're familiar with these lines. All I'm gonna do is like set my point. You're gonna see this little control point. My draw, just like the parallel lines, every line that I draw, no matter how I draw it, is just going to snap, in this case, to this one point. Going okay. All right. Let's see, radial curve, same same setup. I'm going to set my initial point. One, two, three. Set a curve. Set a curve. So now I get the same point that I had with the the radial line, except now I have a, a curve. And how I draw goes along this angle that I've set, but still goes to the the one focal point. And finally, the concentric circle allows me to set up like an, an ellipse or, and by the way, cool little trick, hold down the shift key and it'll keep the, the aspect ratio to a perfect circle. So I'll make, a, I'll make it an ellipse. So release that, adjust the angle if I want to, again, by hovering until it's at the angle, tap to set. And now I get kind of like a three-lined ruler with a, uh, a line bisecting it to let me know the the angle that it's at. And I draw. And it snaps to the angle to to the shape of the circle that I've set. And guide by uh, finally guide. I'll show you that quick. Is, is a cool way to just kind of like, say you want to keep track of certain things or measure along certain things. You just set a line here. You can set as many lines as you want. Um, so yeah, I've used this basically to kind of keep track of certain things or if I'm kind of um, measuring things out uh, on a particular scene, um, I've just found them very useful uh, in that regard to adjust those. You just use the object select tool to adjust and again to delete them. Just select and clear. Okay, so those are all really cool, <laughs> very quick overview. I want to show very quickly how I how incorporate these rulers into my work. So over here, I have a, a sample page that I created uh, using some characters from an old uh, webcomic of mine. Uh, some of you who have known me for a while probably maybe a little familiar with them. Uh, and I just wanted to break down, I use many, many rulers to create this scene. So if I start from the top panel, I use a ruler to create the, the lines here, uh, the focus lines here. For the second background texture, so I use a parallel line ruler, switch to my pen, and just start like drawing along, you know, one angle. I have it on red, so it's like this. And then I just change the angle and redrew until like the pattern was uh, how I wanted it. The third panel, oh, coming down here, I, I just used the parallel lines ruler again to just create a whole bunch of speed lines uh, because I wanted the idea of like this character just like zooming down to eventually panel four, I used a couple of rulers here. 
Uh, and one that I used that you actually can't see here. Like, so for example, I'm gonna hide the, the inks for a second because I just want to focus on my sketch. So I had this idea of him landing and it was gonna be like this little thud and a little bit of an energy ring when he landed. Now, I showed you how to use the, perspect uh, the, the concentric circle ruler. Uh, it's cool when you wanna create a basic uh, circle, but if I wanted something that was a little more kind of angled, like I was on the ground, it was a little it was a little tougher for me to do that. So what I did instead was I went to a new page. I used the concentric circle ruler to create a series of circles. I copied those lines over and then you know pasted it, brought it down, and then I used a free transform. So it'd be edit transform, free transform, and actually transform those lines to, to match sort of where I was thinking it would look on the page. Now, because of that, and because of how uh, drawing in, in raster, uh, sometimes when you do transformations, the, the lines get a little pixelated. So I wouldn't necessarily use this in the final piece, but I would Create a brand new layer, switch to my pen. Because it's supposed to be a little more kind of energy, it's not intended to be like a super precise thing. So I don't mind that what I drew is not rules. I've been using a lot of examples of how you can create precise lines and stuff like that. But sometimes you can use it just as your general guide to then kind of freehand things a little bit. If you want to kind of give your characters or your, your scene a little more of many ways that you can work with rulers, both to you know have precise stuff and just for simple guides. I'm just kind of bring back up my. finished piece. So that's what I ended up for here. A basic ruler here to kind of create some some focus lines because that allowed, unlike the the focus line tool, it gave me just a little more freedom to the like All right, I'm going to move the ruler, uh, you know, on a piece of paper. All right, so those are the uh, some of the special rulers. I have two really cool rulers I, also, I have left to show you. Uh, I'm going to create a brand new canvas. Let's create this 10 by 10, 300. Hit OK. Apparently, I had it set for a story file. Come on. There we go. All right. Uh, I have the symmetrical ruler and the perspective ruler. I'm going to start with the symmetrical ruler. This is a cool thing for, for, for a couple of reasons. One, if you want to create like really complex patterns, this is the tool to use. Uh, for example, so coming down here, you can see on the tool properties palette, uh, you can set the number of lines from two all the way to 16. I'll set it to 16 just to show it as an example. And now what you see is all these little guidelines. If I use my uh, pencil tool, You'll notice everything I draw in this one section, a like a magic spell you want to kind of
create that and you can bring that up. Now, with all that said, what I generally tend to use uh, the symmetry ruler for is very fast character design. So I'm going to bring the number of lines from 16 back to 2. I'm going to hold the shift key down because I want to make sure that this is a vertical line. I draw along there and then I'm just going to grab my pencil tool and I can do a very fast drawing of a person. Now, this is, you know, for me, it's important because like when I'm trying to come up with a character design, I'm really just want to do something quick. I don't want, it, it, I'm not worried about like, like a, having the character in a cool angle or anything like that. It's just a really cool way for me to just go and, and then I can kind of have some fun and start working in little costume bits to it. Or add claws, or add an X, in case you're wondering who I was drawing here. <laughs> so it just allows me the freedom to just kind of create something on the fly. And then like, because then if it's like, oh, you know what, I don't like how this is looking. I'm, I don't feel so bad about like, okay, I, I spent hours on this and it's not working. This was just a very quick thing for me to, to, to jot out and then send to my client or you know, a friend or whoever say, hey, how do you think this looks? Do you think this will work? Yes, no, what can be changed? And you know, by doing it on one side, you know, re repeats on the other. If I wanted to add some asymmetry, I'm gonna come right back up here and instead of turning off uh, snap to ruler, I'm going to turn off snap to special ruler. This is how you turn on and off all the special rulers that I've covered from uh, to this point, including the perspective ruler. So I'm going to turn that off. And let's say that this shoulder pad is going to be bigger than this one. And then turn the snap to back on. And I can continue on. This designing the character. So as you can tell, there's a lot of ways you can work with the symmetry ruler. This is my particular favorite, but I would really highly recommend just like trying them out, see uh, what you can create with it and see how it can help develop your uh, your creative flow or your, your you know, just, just trying to quickly come up with an idea uh, for a character or a scene or anything like that. Um, finally, Let's talk about my particular favorite thing in Clip Studio Paint. Now, like I said, I've heard, heard about this program a long time ago, and hearing about the rulers was cool, but then hearing about the perspective ruler, that was the thing that sold me on this. I'm like, going, I need this program. So I was very happy when they brought it to, the, to internationally when it was then known as uh, Manga Studio 3. Uh, the perspective ruler, if you are familiar with uh, perspective drawing at all, you have your horizon, you have a vanishing point, and then you have lines that emanate from that vanishing point to create a sense of depth. So if I were to create a box, I'd have my square, but I would make sure that the lines that go to the vanishing point help give it that look of a uh, of a three-dimensional object. Now, oh, I'm gonna undo a couple. I could do this with a linear ruler and a figure ruler if I wanted to. I could draw my basic line there and then grab my ruler like so, and then grab another, you know, and just a, those kind of things. So that is one way that if I were using real world tools or if I just had the basic tools, uh, basic rulers available, that's how I would create a, a, a box in, in this case, one point perspective. Fortunately, let me clear all this out. Clip Studio Paint 
uh, has made that significantly easier for us. Coming down to the rulers, I click on perspective ruler, and I'm just going to set up this first guideline, second guideline, and now I have my, my vanishing point. And I have these guidelines, which I can adjust with the object select tool to reposition like either the guidelines, you can either reposition the guidelines or change the angle. If I click on the, the, the plus, I can change the position of the horizon and the switch to my pencil. And all I'm going to do is draw freehand. And now I've created a box freehand in one point perspective. If I want to do additional points, I just go back to the tool, perspective ruler, make sure in the tool properties that when I add this, it's going to create a, keep adding vanishing points and it created a second line or second vanishing point. And now I have two sets of guides. I have my, I'm going to click on the, uh, use the object select tool so you can see it. I have my first vanishing point. And now I have my second vanishing point. I can adjust the vanishing point and then I draw. My vertical lines will be vertical. Any lines that go to in this direction will go to this vanishing point. And lines that I draw here will go to its second vanishing point. Now, one last example of where you can use and create your, uh, you know, say you want to do like a one, one, we're going to add one more point to this, uh, to this demonstration. So right here, I have a very, you know, sketched out idea of uh, a scene. And I kept this freehand. I kind of had a general idea of like, okay, I think the vanishing points, you know, there's going to be one here. There's going to be one that goes out this way. And then there's going to be a third vanishing point that goes down here. And this is generally how it works. Uh, I will try to sketch it out because I don't want to focus on it being like precise right now. I just want to get the general feel. So from here, come over here to my perspective ruler. I'll set my first vanishing point. And I'm going to use the lines that I drew as guides. So I'm going to set my first guide line here, release, use my second guideline, I will use this picture frame here. All right, now my first, now I'm going to use the desk this one, and we'll go with this one. And then I'm going to use this line this line and now I'm going to reduce the opacity of my roughs a little bit so I can kind of see uh, layer up here grab my pen and just zoom in a little bit draw along to create my book. Now, I can use this either in like my finished ink stage, but in this case, I would probably just still kind of like, now that I had my sketch, now I'm gonna draw some of these lines in perspective to make sure things look right. Um, and then I can kind of go back and add some, you know, if I want to make say like the page, but I'll probably go back and just kind of like turn off the perspective when I'm ready to do it. And I'll just freehand to make And I'll just kind of continue on that.
and just kind of continue. Maybe this is the, the next stage of my roughs. Uh, more often than not, it probably would be. Because um, then I would know, okay, I was close to being on perspective, or maybe the, the picture frames weren't quite on perspective. So now I can kind of readjust where things look. Um, I can set up like a, yep. Like for example, yeah, the, the cabinet's a little off. Um, I can set up approximately where the books are. So then I can go back later on and start adding some variety and height and, and depth and, and all that. And just generally use my perspective ruler to, to you know, continue to flesh out the scene that I'm creating. So this was a very, 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 very short version of all the rulers in this, but I hope that it came across uh, how much I found that this to be a game changer in digital arting. Uh, because for the longest time, this was not, I don't, I, I don't know how many of you have been, how long some of you have been digital uh, creating on the computer. But for the longest time, this was not possible. Uh, you had to really work at, like, say, using a um, the straight line tool in, like, say, Photoshop or Painter or some of these other programs. And you'd have to do it, might not be precise, it might be a little off. But the important thing was, like, yeah, but it, it was also very uniform. Um, so I found just this to be such a game changer that other programs try to copy and, and are, are, are very late getting into the game. It's like, oh yeah, we have perspective rulers and we have these things. Like, that's cool. Clip Studio Paint's been doing this for years. So they've really perfected it. Um, so if you have not played around with the, the rulers, any of the rulers in the program, I really highly recommend you, you know, play around them, check them out, see what you can create with them. And uh, yeah, that, that kind of covers a lot of the things that I, 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 just, I just love these rulers. <laughs> I'm so speechless, I love these rulers. Um, so that wraps up uh, my, my portion of this. I'd, I'd like to turn this over back to Fahim uh, and I'd like to answer any questions that you guys have. Sure. Thank you so much, Doug. We have a, a few questions, so we'll try to get through as many of these as possible. Um, we'll start off with some easy ones and then um, move along. So the first question is, is the ruler invisible on final output? Yes, the, the ruler will not be seen in the final product. It is purely there when you are uh, working on it. So when you print it out or when you are saving it as a a non-clip studio paint uh, file type. So whether it's like a JPEG or a Photoshop file or any of that, these rulers will not leave clip studio paint. Thank you. Second question is, how do you change line width on rulers? The line width of the rulers are actually going to remain the same. So the line that you see here on the guides won't change. Um, same thing with the, uh, you know, with the basic rulers. It comes back to this one. Yeah, so if I use like the linear ruler, the line is going to be the line no matter what. Uh, that can't be changed. But when you draw, you can change the width of the line that you draw. So if I, I'll chunk up the size here so you can see it better. So I can go light or heavy. So you can adjust the, the, the width of the line you draw. You cannot adjust the uh, the width of the ruler on the screen. Thank you. How do you reshape rulers after you've placed them down? Well, it will, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, I'll place a couple of different ones down. So I'll place a linear ruler and I will use the ruler pen and I will use a figure ruler and I will place a, let's go with parallel line. Okay. So with all of these, you will be using the object select tool. And you select the ruler that you want to re reposition or reshape, and you'll see this bounding box. Now the, the control points you see along the sides help you kind of adjust the size. And you can kind of distort it a little bit 
if I use the square, you can really see how you can kind of distort. This up here, adjust the rotation. So adjust the angle of the, so that's one way. But if you really want to adjust the, the shape of the, the ruler that you're using, you want to click on any of the control points that you see here. So I'm going to adjust this angle. I'm going to like really stretch it out here. Or if I come over to the ruler pen ruler, I just reposition until the curve is where I want it. If I want to get rid of a control point, I just select the control point and then right click and delete it. If I want to add one, I just click on the ruler and be okay, right about there. Right click, add control point. And with the special rulers, You just use the, it basically the, the short version is like you were using the object select tool for all of the rulers. I will reposition and change the angle of my, with the perspective, same thing. Use the object select tool to adjust The position of your guides to adjust the position of the tool properties. Make sure that fixed eye level is checked. If I check that, now when I adjust the the vanishing points, the answer is the object select tool is going to be your best friend when reshaping and working with the rulers in the program. Okay, thank you. Is there a way to hide and show rulers temporarily? Yes, if you come over to the layers palette, right here you can kind of see there's a rulers icon here and there's a rulers icon here. Now this is gonna be really cool. So right now, if I click on this, the drop down list, we have a couple of options. Show in all layers, show in same folder, or show only when editing target. Now to answer the, question, the, the first question first, if I uncheck this, it hides the ruler. So the, the ruler is no longer visible. You can also just hide that layer. So if you didn't want, if it was like you had the perspective ruler and uh, you didn't want that that layer, if it was just the perspective ruler on it, just click the eyeball and it would hide, well, it would hide the entire layer. So if you were drawing on it, that would not be a useful um, thing. But, uh, but yeah, all right, I wanted to come up here quick. Um, so that's how you would hide the ruler. But if you want to have, like, say, the perspective ruler only visible on this drawing layer, I would make sure to check only when editing target. So now it's visible only on this drawing layer. If I go to the layer above it, it disappears. And if I have a layer folder, so let's have a connect, I'll create a new layer folder here. I'm going to put these two layers in the folder. And I come here and I create a new layer up top above it. And now come back here, click on this. Now, instead of show when editing target, I'm going to do show in same folder. So right now, the layer, the, the ruler will be visible on this layer and this layer because they're both in the layer folder. But if I go to a layer outside of the folder, it disappears. Um, so those are your the, the various ways that you can hide your rulers. Okay, thank you. Is there a way to keep parallel lines equidistant? Yes, well, in a way. And I'm gonna show you, this allows me to show you one other cool trick. All right, so let's go back to you. I'm gonna hide, I'm gonna keep my per parallel lines. Do this. Now, one of the things that you can do with any of the basic rulers, now I showed you, you can create a very simple line. You can also add little tick marks to it, so almost like a tape measure. Coming to the tool properties, click on the button that says, or the checkbox that says scale, and then you can choose whether to have the scale like, so millimeters, pixels, inches, points, Q, equal division, or a golden ratio. I'm gonna go with millimeters in this example. 
So I'm going to just draw a line, try as perpendicular as I can. And you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of tick marks. So now it's like a, like a, proper ruler. Then I would then use this as my guide to draw equidistant parallel lines. So I'll go to the ink tool and I go on each. Oops. I would also turn off the snap to basic ruler because we only want to draw along the special ruler here. So that's my trick to creating equidistant. And the cool thing is, what I also like about uh, the rulers in this is like you can extend them past the canvas. So for some of the that maybe we're going outside of the start, and it's a little tougher to see. I'm gonna do a quick thing here. I'm just gonna make my uh, interface light so you guys can see. Um, so now I can still select along. And create my equidistant lines that way. So that is my suggestion for creating equidistant parallel lines. Okay, thank you. Uh, how do you create custom rulers and how do you save them? Okay, um, well, this is how I would do it. And actually, those of you may, I, some of you may have bought, uh, I have, a, I have a, a store where I sell certain uh, Clip Studio Paint uh, little tools and stuff. And one of the things that I did, because there are some people I know that um, like to work with French curves, but French curves as, as they are, are not available in Clip Studio Paint. So I created French curves. Um, let me, I, so I'm gonna a very wonky French curve. So here's the, the the trick to how I did it. Um, basically, I just went, I used the ruler pen and kind of traced along. Until I got to the uh, to the end point, then use my object select tool, readjusted, maybe you know, and removed points as needed. Incidentally, another way that could this could have been done, if you wanted to make sure that it was like uh, one whole piece, you can use like, say like the figure ruler. Tool. And just kind of trace along it that way. So there are a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, and that's my suggestion. If you had like a, 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 a shape or a stencil that you want to, to create, it's like take the, the item that you want to turn into a ruler and you know, uh, just basically do it the way I'm doing here. It's, it's, a, it's a slow process, but it does get the, the job done. Now, when it's done, I go to edit, Register material, image. Now, right now, it's, I would probably like, well, first thing I would do is I would probably clear out my, oops, not that. I would, however, yeah, clear out the, the drawing that I did. So I would then select my ruler, edit, register material, image. I would choose my save uh, location. Let's say download. I would enter French curve. There won't be a preview image because rulers don't show up uh, 
in like with a preview image and materials. So you can always like create your own and, and uh, add it. Like say, take, take, take a screenshot and then you can click this button to add it. But you just save your, enter your name, save your location and hit okay. And now go to window, material, download. And I have a French curve, just drag it onto the page. And then I can use it as I need. And that's how, that that's that's basically how I I create my uh, rulers and then save them for future use. So incidentally, if you do guys, if you guys ever get any of my templates, uh, like my French curves on my store, it's the same process. You just select each French curve and register it, or you can select them all at once and register, it, and the entire set of rulers will be paste it onto the page. So whichever works best for you. All right, thank you so much, Doug. Uh, we'll take one more question that's sort of um, similar to the last question. Uh, what rulers do you recommend for geometric shapes? Well, I would use the figure ruler uh, and then I would use the polygon. So I would use like, for example, I would if I want to create you know, like a basic triangle, I would do that. Uh, if I want to, like, say, create a uh, polygon, let's go. Let's go with an octagon. I create a basic shape, and then, you know, I could draw along that, and then um, grab the object select tool, bring it down. I'm holding the shift key, so it kind of stays in in line with where I had it before. Maybe because it's going to be three-dimensional, I'll make it a little bigger or a little, a little wider. I'll draw along here. And then let's say I'll grab a linear ruler, turn off the scale for a sec. And and like I said before, like this is the same you know method I would use like with real world tools. If I had like an octagon you know shape that I could do that, this is the same way I would do it in the program or uh, in with real world tools. And that's something to uh, I guess to keep in mind, especially if you're someone who's new to uh, digital arting and miss using real world tools, you can just in a in Eclipse Studio Paint way. So that's how I would create like a geometric shape in the program. All right, thank you so much, Doug. I'm going to take the reins of the webinar and share my screen. Um, Thank you so much for this super informative uh, webinar on rulers and Clip Studio Paint. I believe everyone learned a lot, including myself. Um, so thank you so much, Doug. <laughs> My pleasure. I hope you guys and, enjoyed it. This was fun. Yes, it absolutely was. Um, and for more information on Clip Studio Paint, please make sure to follow us or uh, go to our website at clipstudio.net forward slash en and then also graphicsly.com. For more information about Doug, uh, and what he's up to and what he's doing, please visit him at all of his social media hang handles over there that you're seeing on your screen. Um, if you have any questions, I'm sure Doug would be delighted to answer some of those uh, and you can reach out to him directly. So with that, thank you so much, Doug. Thank you to the audience. And then we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.